Coming up on First at Four, one local volunteer fire department hosts a fire safety class for Head Start students. And we'll show you how you can apply for assistance to help cover heating bills. And watching a bit of warm air alert work into the region for early this week, but things stay quiet weather-wise. The latest, though, in the second half of the work week as well. Coming up as Mountain News First at Four starts right now. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News First at Four. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Huntsley. First at four, more than five months have passed since the July flood that devastated communities across the region. Some businesses that were impacted are now open again and rolling like they were before. Lecture Flower Shop in Neon had five feet of water inside the building. Now it's full of flowers again. Owner Emery Mullen says his customers continue to come in every day. I about knew my customers was waiting on me to come back, and they all, were, they all told me they was waiting for me to come back. Let Your Flower Shop is located in downtown Neon and is open six days a week. We'll have more on businesses back up and running tonight at 6. Starting today, homeowners in need of some help on their heating bills can apply for assistance through community action agencies around Kentucky. Jim Stratman spoke with folks at the Kentucky River Foothills Center about how you can get help. The price of everything seems to be going up and up and up. And that just seems to bury you financially. You get the bill and you are terrified to open it. And at this time of year with cold weather upon us, losing your heat because of missed payments well, that could be disastrous. We have operated Light Heap since uh, 81, and it is a wonderful program that helps our neighbors who are struggling paying their energy bills. Karen Atkins works at Kentucky River Foothills, which is a branch of the Community Action Network in Kentucky. Each year, they offer the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program, or LIHEAP for short, for those who can't make those payments. Now, if you are in a heating crisis situation, meaning that they've turned your heat off because you've missed payments or you're within four days of running out of your fuel supply, you can apply for LIHEAP funds to try to get that heat turned back on. There's a max benefit amount of $400. Mm -hmm. So if someone applies this month and does not meet the maximum of $400, they can reach back out and apply again. Atkins says that last year the program helped over 4,300 households in Clark, Estill, Powell, and Madison counties turn the heat back on. She says that if you're in crisis, get your application in as soon as possible at the Community Action Agency in your area. Reporting in Lexington, Jim Stratman, WKYT. To find a Community Action Agency near you and to find out if you're eligible, Look for this story on our website, WYMT.com. The Thousand Sticks Volunteer Fire Department in Leslie County hosted a fire safety class for Head Start students. Students from Mountain View Elementary School stopped by the station to learn the importance of having a working smoke detector in their home and other tips. We try to teach every kid about the little white things that's either mounted up on the wall or on the side of the wall, anywhere near a door. Um, if you hear them chirp, just go let your parents know that they're chirping, that the batteries need to be changed. Service them every year. If you do not have a fire alarm, you can call your local fire department and they should be able to help you get one. Well, a tale of two halves of the area for many of us. We've been socked in with the cloud cover throughout this Monday, but we're seeing some clearing not far off. Here's a look at UVA Wise as we see the image update there. They are right at freezing right now with overcast skies over High Knob right now. Contrast that with what's going on over in Slade. We're sunny along the Mountain Parkway there in Powell County. 41, the current reading there. You see where the sun is out. We've gotten to 45 in Irvin Williamsburg in Jacksboro. 42 in London, Manchester, just now getting to 41 in Hazard. Still 39, though, in Jackson. And look at Somerset at 46. You see that cloud cover has been with us today, slowly eroding as we head towards the uh, sunset hour. And it's going to be a little bit before we're all clear. So heading into tonight, zone by zone, we're down into the 20s. We'll start to clear things out tonight. Middle and upper 20s in many spots. We'll clear things out at least for a little bit. That'll help those temperatures drop. Upper 20s to near 30 throughout much of the Kentucky River Valley. And same thing into at least the middle 20s as we head into the big Sandy. Details in a few minutes though on a tranquil start to the work week, turning a little 
messy toward the end of it. The latest in a few. Steve? All right, Evan, thank you. A Virginia teacher is recovering after an unthinkable crime in a classroom last week. Police say she was intentionally shot by a six-year-old. CBS's Jennifer Bism reports from New York. 25-year-old Abby Werner is in stable condition and showing signs of improvement Monday. We had a female victim shot in the abdomen. The first grade teacher sustained a life-threatening gunshot wound at the Richneck Elementary School in Newport News Friday in what police describe as an intentional act. This was not an accidental shooting. The altercation was between a six-year-old, the, the student uh, who did have the firearm, and the teacher, and then a round was fired. We Parents swarmed the school when they got word. Some expressed outrage and asked the question on everyone's mind. Why is there a seven-year-old with a bloody gun? Come on, think about it. Parents later learned the accused child was just six years old. So young, it's not clear how Virginia law will deal with the crime. When you're talking about a six-year-old, you've got a very, very undeveloped mind, and it's a, it's a difficult thing for um, the criminal system to give any um, sort of accountability to a six-year-old mind. The boy can't be tried as an adult, and he's also too young to be committed to a detention center if found guilty. Police have not yet said how the boy got the gun or who owns it. He could be removed from the home and the parents or caretakers could face charges. Parents could be charged with a misdemeanor, which you know would be a maximum of 12 months in jail. No other students were physically harmed and school remains closed Monday and Tuesday. Jennifer Bisram, CBS News. This registered as the first school shooting of 2023, according to a tracker by Education Week. The man accused of opening fire on a crowded New York City subway has pleaded guilty to 10 terrorism charges. Frank James entered his plea during an appearance in federal court last week. He also pleaded guilty to one count of firing a gun. James shot 10 people and injured 19 others in last April's attack. The 62-year-old admits he was trying to injure people on the Brooklyn-bound train, but says he did not intend to kill anyone. Prosecutors argue James fired his gun with the intent to kill. A judge will sentence James at a later date. He faces life in prison, but prosecutors say they are willing to recommend James spend at least 30 years behind bars if he shows remorse. The U.S. Supreme Court has declined to take up a case involving a Trump-era immigration policy the Biden administration abandoned. The so-called public charge rule made it harder for immigrants to obtain legal status if they used public benefits like food stamps. A group of Republican-led states sued to preserve the expansion, citing procedural challenges. The Supreme Court dismissed a similar legal challenge in June, so the ruling was not a surprise. Seattle's public school system is suing several big tech companies over their students' mental health issues. The suit filed Friday says the school district accuses the parents, the parent companies of platforms including Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, and YouTube of negatively impacting and exploiting vulnerable students' brains. The lawsuit cites an increase in youth struggling with anxiety, depression, thoughts of self-harm, and suicidal ideation. The school district says the youth mental health crisis has impeded its ability to fulfill its educational mission. An official for fa uh, Facebook parent company Meta said in a statement that its platforms have more than 30 tools to support teens and families. The other companies did not immediately respond to requests for comment. Coming up on First at Four, Florida's property insurance industry has been in trouble for years. We'll take a look at what that means for homeowners following the destruction of Hurricane Ian. Plus, quiet weather continues tonight and for the next couple of days. The full breakdown, though, on the way after this, and it includes a much more special.